hello everyone welcome back to my channel so in this video i'll be explaining you about uh, structure of wood so before going actually into structure of wood let's have some introduction part uh, let's see some uses of uh, timber and then we'll talk about structure right so the word timber is derived from the word timbrian which means to build so we are trying to use the wood we are trying to convert the wood into timber that's what which is making us to apply it in various purposes so generally timber is the wood extracted wood which is used for all sorts of applications especially engineering applications we have generally three forms of timber one is converted timber rough timber and standing timber i'll start uh, right from the ending standing timber standing timber means when the tree is alive whatever the wood you can see or the timber you can see that's called as standing timber means the timber which is available in a living tree next we have rough timber rough timber means it is that which is obtained after felling a tree means after cutting down a tree whatever uh, timber you can see means you chop off all the branches leaves etc extra, extra portion that timber what you call is called rough timber uh, which is having some sap inside it some moisture inside it next we have converted timber so the timber which is uh, cut into various sizes or required sizes and shapes and also which is used for all sorts of applications is your converted timber means that is the one which is uh, seasoned and which is applied as an engineering material so coming to the source of timber as everybody of us know uh, generally the source of timber is from a tree so we could get excess of trees only from a forest coming to uses of timber first is building construction yes in construction of buildings you can see in some of the foreign countries people construct uh, houses out of wooden and also uh, in uh, old constructions like in our uh, grandparents homes you can see in old houses still the beams and rafters are with the help of uh, timber only people used to do that so it is useful in building constructions also in making beams and rafters what i was talking now next construction of bridges and boats you can see some wooden bridges or some wooden boats furniture and instruments so whatever we can see in our houses like sofas beds and uh, doors windows and uh, uh, the decorative uh, furniture items whatever we can see that's all with the help of wood and also instruments you have musical instruments made up of wood like your uh, tabla guitar whatever flute Next we have railway sleepers, so you can see in our railway track the sleepers are wooden sleepers. Next we have toys, yes made up of wood and all, all sorts of engraving works. Next we have uh, railway coach wagons, so wagons are also, in earlier days most of the wagons are made up of uh, timber. Next form work for cement concrete, so for, for pouring concrete most of the people are using nowadays cement, but uh, still there are using uh, form work, uh, timber form works and also scaffolding is also made by timber next uh, various engineering forms of timber like plywoods veneers boards whatever we are using in our houses uh, that's all also a form of timber so you can see the diagrams uh, building construction beams and rafters in the second diagram and third you can see the boats you can see a bridge you can see the railway sleepers and you can see the form work now let's get into the classification of trees so generally trees are classified into exogenous and endogenous uh, why we are talking about trees means uh, our timber is coming from a tree so exogenous is again classified into two types conifers and deciduous conifers are softwood trees means the wood obtained from conifers is soft light colored uh, next the second classification exogenous trees is deciduous so the deciduous wood is hard and it's dark in color so now let's get into details of what is exogenous what is endogenous and uh, let's see some examples coming to exogenous tree exogenous trees are those trees uh, which grow outwards mean in, means in the form of width see the word itself it is telling exo means it is moving outwards it is growing outwards means uh, these trees will be looking bigger in terms of width width wise they look very bigger means they keep on increasing so the annual rings or the consecutive rings whatever we call they keep on 
as our age increases every year similarly for tree also for every year one ring will be added right annual ring that's why it's called annual ring so these rings will help us in determining the age of the tree so you can see now in the diagram you can see in the second diagram you can see the rings right the ring like structures they are called annual rings they help us in determining the age of the uh, tree so in exogenous i told you we have two classifications one is conifers and next is deciduous let's talk about conifers the name itself it's specifying uh, there is a word called like cone means the structure of the tree looks like a cone right and these trees are also called evergreen trees means uh, these trees uh, until new leaves come the old leaves do not shred down means the old leaves do not fall down so that's the reason all the time throughout the year you can see leaves on the tree itself as told earlier conifers are soft wood trees so they yield wood which is soft in nature light colored and light in weight and weak examples are pine deodar etc so you can see all uh, look like a cone shape next is deciduous deciduous are hardwoods they are also called broad leaf trees uh, so the leaves of them look very broad in nature and also uh, these trees uh, will shred their leaves in autumn and uh, new new leaves will uh, come out in spring season like in january season you can see new new leaves coming up means once in autumn uh, means around october november when all the leaves fall down uh, you can see the tree left uh, blank without any leaves so that is the nature of deciduous trees already told the they yield hardwood which is very strong which is dark colored and heavy in weight and very durable that's why you can see whatever we use in our houses for uh, making doors etc you can use teak wood right then that's that's an example of a deciduous tree so they look broader next is endogenous so i told exogenous trees grows outwards means along the width they grow endogenous are the reverse of it endo means inside so they grow inwards means they grow taller they don't grow in terms of width they grow in terms of uh, length or height whatever you call so uh, that's called endogenous tree examples are bam bamboo and palm so this bamboo trees you can see palm trees you can see how the palm trees are they are very tall not so bigger in width but very very taller so they are growing inwards and they have fibrous mass inside so coming to the differences between hardwood and softwood uh, hardwood trees have more complex structure but whereas softwood trees have very less complex structure hardwoods look dark in color as told earlier softwoods look light in color uh, hardwoods grow very slowly but softwoods grow very fast hardwoods have very high density whereas softwood has lower density hardwood uh, is very hard in nature that's the reason we are calling it as hardwood whereas softwood is softer hardwoods are heavy in weight when compared to softwoods they are also good at fire resistance when compared to softwoods and they are also good in taking the compression and tension so finally one has to adopt hardwood so to so as to get a durable uh, material let's get into parts of a tree so a tree generally consists of three important parts like trunk crown and roots so the roots will suck the water and nutrients from the ground and soil and they give distribute to the trunk and from the trunk uh, all the uh, nutrients and water will be traveling through all the uh, leaves through branches etc right next uh, structure of a tree so yeah sorry for the disturbance let's continue so you can see here also in this diagram the structure of a tree where you can observe the roots the trunk part and the branches and the twigs the small small branches that come out from the main branches and the leaves what we call foliage here so yeah let's continue uh, when talking on a broader sense uh, structure uh, in the sense technically when we talk about structure of a tree it is mainly categorized into two ways one is macro structure and one is micro structure so macro structure means it is that which is visible with our naked eye means one can see it with their own eyes that's called as a macro structure so visually you can see the tree you can see the roots you can see the branches that's what is a macro structure 
even once you cut down the tree also you can see its cross section with your eye whereas microstructure is that which cannot be seen with our naked eye we have to take the help of a microscope so let's talk about microstructure which is one of the most important uh, topic in this uh, structure of a wood so you can see this is the cross section of microstructure of wood so you can see once the wood is cut if you observe the cross section it looks like this yeah so this is called macrostructure uh, so a very very important question uh, you need to draw the diagram and you need to explain all the components along with the functions right that's about uh, macrostructure diagram so you can see some components like pit and hardwood then sap wood then cambium layer then you can see outer bark then you can see inner bark and you can see growth rings you have rays etc so this is what it looks like so more colorful it looks like this but this diagram is what you need to draw in the exam so you can see uh, whatever compounds just now we discussed are there shown in this diagram so right from the center you can see you have a, a medulla or pit next you have hardwood next you have sapwood next you have medullary rays next you have outer bark and next you have inner bark and next you have cambium layer so let's discuss about all the components in detail yeah so let's see in detail the explanation of the functions of uh, each uh, component present in the microstructure so right in the middle you have the pith which is also called as medulla this is the center most part of your uh, wood structure you can observe the black color one in the middle that's called pith or medulla which is also called core of the tree so it consists of all cellular tissues and it nourishes the plant in its young age so whatever the strength whatever the structure whatever the uh, hardness stiffness gained by the tree at its young age is all because of this medulla next you have hardwood so surrounding the pith you have some annular rings see them that's called so hardwood is the ring annual inner rings which are surrounding the medulla uh, they are usually dark in color and they do not take part in any growth of, growth of tree but they impart rigidity to your tree so you can see in this diagram more clearly where my pointer is there there you can observe the pit which is the center part around this whatever the dark brown color you can observe the rings that's our hardwood so there's a pretty dis, uh, difference between uh, color of uh, hardwood and sapwood see hardwood is more darker in color so these rings are called hardwood so hardwood is nothing but the rings covering the center part of the tree which is our medulla right the function of hardwood is to give rigidity to the tree next we have sapwood so what is sapwood sapwood is the next uh, part of annual rings which is in between so i can observe here from here to here we have sapwood which is again light in color so this sapwood is the rings which is in between the hardwood and the cambium layer I'll tell you uh, just in a few seconds what is cambium layer but sapwood is that uh, which is in in between the hardwood and the uh, cambium layer that's the sapwood means after the hardwood the sapwood rings will start so the sapwood will take active part in the growth of the tree so as when I was talking like uh, tree is growing outwards in the sense here the sapwood is increasing right uh, this uh, sapwood uh, will have sap inside it sap is nothing but the moisture uh, which will help in the growth of the tree uh, and uh, this always moves in the upward direction so from the roots to the trunk to the branches to the leaves it goes on like that and it's also known as alburnum right next is cambium layer so cambium layer, layer just now we observed see the last one here this one the dotted portion the last one that's the cambium layer here here also you can observe see this one okay this part here you can have after the sapwood you have cambium layer so cambium layer is something but uh, the sap will be stored in this layer uh, and uh, this sap is not yet converted into sapwood so the sap once it becomes harder the sapwood rings are formed when it is not harder it's still in a liquid form that sap it will be stored in the cambium layer right so once the uh, sap in the cambium layer again uh, becomes hard what will happen 
this it means indirectly the area of the sap wood is increasing it means indirectly the tree is increasing next we have inner bark so you can see this diagram uh, see here this is the outer bark means this is what you can feel it with your hand you can touch the outer bark so after once the cambium layer ends the inner bark will start means inner bark is not visible to our eye unless you cut it but outer bark can be felt with our hand and we can see it right so when you are touching a tree it means indirectly you are touching a outer bark so inner bark is just after the ending of cambium layer the inner bark will start so bark is always a protective covering for your tree whether it is inner or outer so inner bark or inner skin is or uh, is it is a layer which is covering the cambium layer just now i told you once the cambium layer ends there only is our inner bark means it is protecting the inner part of the tree against any injuries next we have outer bark so outer bark is the outer skin or outer covering which is protecting the tree all the time uh, and it uh, also contains cracks fissures holes etc all will be on the outer bark what you can see physically it consists of cells of wood fiber and is also known as cortex next we have medullary rays so if you observe in all this diagram and also this diagram you observe these rays right these rays right which are originating from the pith and they are keeping on increasing That's right these are called medullary rays so these rays are very thin radial fibers they they are born at the pith and they keep on increasing towards the cambium layer and as the tree grows on it goes on up to cambium layer the main function of this race is to hold the rings of heartwood and sapwood together right next coming to the microstructure of tree so already i told you microstructure is the one which cannot be seen with our naked eye you have to take a microscope so once we talk about microstructure we consider living cells and dead cells so living cells are generally divided into four parts which is membrane protoplasm sap and core sap is what just now we discussed it's a moisture uh, it's the fluid fluid uh, uh, protein or fluid whatever uh, that's flowing inside the tree for its growth and uh, next membrane it consists of tissues and cellulose like human beings uh, human beings are also having tissues right similarly trees will have membranes next we have protoplasm it it is a little bit granular transparent and contains vegetable protein whatever it is sucking uh, the roots are sucking the uh, nitrogen hydrogen sulfur from the uh, soil that is all coming to the protoplasm next we have core uh, which is little bit different from pro uh, protoplasm it has presence of phosphorus also this core only i was talking like uh, medulla or pith so uh, this uh, core will have uh, been important proteins and uh, uh, minerals which helps in growth of the tree at a very young age i told you that's what is this so i already told you cell is of four components but these living cells are also classified based on the function we have conductive cells mechanical cells and storage cells so conductive cells means they try to transmit nutrients from roots to the branches this is what we know next we have mechanical cells so these cells are a little bit elongated they are having thick wall and they are having interconnected narrow interior cavities they impart strength to the wood next coming to storage cells these uh, uh, help in storing and transmitting the nutrients to living cells uh, in horizontal direction and they are usually located in the medullary rays so if you are talking in uh, microstructure point of view you have to talk in the form of cells when you are talking in macrostructure point of view you have to talk about all these components so this is what is about the structure of wood so hope you understood the video thank you so much for watching